Hey you guys, hope you guys are all doing well. Put a bit of effort into my hair and makeup today because I'm not doing well, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm feeling really, really, really down. I've honestly had the week from hell. Like, let me just explain to you what happened. Basically first, I got the worst period of my life. My cramps toppled over in pain, intolerable. I literally could not breathe. And then afterwards, I started to get a bit better. And then what do I get? The worst cold known to man. My throat was so sore. I couldn't talk, I couldn't swallow, I couldn't eat, it was so bad. And then I started to get better from that. And then what happens to me? Ear infection. Right now, I'm not even joking, there's a ring going on in my ear. So if I'm talking loud or like weird, it's because I, I can't even hear myself. All I can hear is this ringing noise and my ear feels like it's about to fall off. With all of that being said though, I do hope you guys are having a lovely week, despite mine. Today's video is about the reasons why I could probably never go to therapy. I don't really know what brought this like thought process on, but it's a thought process that I had and I just thought I'd share it with you. Um, I don't know, I hope you guys are feeling like super, super lucky. We never really know how things come about on this channel, they just kind of do. Obviously, therapy is amazing and I wish it was more accessible to everybody, like everyone deserves to have therapy. Me personally though, I think about it, I'm like, I shouldn't think therapy's for me because I kind of know the root of all my problems. I'm just not willing to do anything about it, so therapy for me is just a waste of time because like, I'm not, I'm not going to do anything you say. Here's a list of just additional things anyway. So number one, I love being mysterious. I love being mysterious and the thought of going to therapy and like oversharing, then you're going to know everything about me. And then it's like, I'm not like this cool, mysterious, like enigma anymore. The next thing is I have really unrealistic expectations. I'm not a patient person and I expect to be cured after one session of therapy. Okay, babe, I've told you now, fix me. Like that's the way I'm expecting therapy to work. And I know it doesn't work like that. I obviously, the logical part of my brain knows that's not how it works, but I don't care. I'm just kind of expecting you to like, just be super woman or something. Every single week, how long? Also, what happens when we're done? Like how long, like people are like, oh, I've been going to therapy for like 10 years. What the fuck are you talking about for 10 years? That's fucking crazy. Like me, like I have places people would see, I'm gonna need you to like, three sessions max like i'm gonna need this do you know what i mean like slim it up like give me like the cliff notes like just something do you know what i mean i love talking about myself i would love to talk about myself but the idea of like having like each week having like a one hour slot where all i do is talk about myself and like going into it knowing that i'm just going to talk about myself and you just have to sit there and listen and maybe interject a few times to me sounds like literal hell because i don't know it just feels like really forced and natural because if i'm talking about myself like and i'm just you know rambling on it's because i just want to do it because i just want to talk about myself like do you know what i mean but like when there's just a space created for just me to talk about myself. I don't know, it kind of seems like egocentric and I'm not really in love with it. I'm not really vibing with it. I'm not really into it. It's just not for me. I would much rather just like talk to you about myself whenever I'm feeling like it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Next, I've heard therapy is really, really expensive. So I want to get the bang for my buck. Is that how the saying goes? I don't really know. But I, I don't have time to dilly dally. I don't have time to mess around. I don't have time to like play games here. I want help and i need it now but the problem is i don't know you so like first session i'm supposed to come up and they just tell you my problems i don't even know you i don't even know how i like you so like i feel like i need to know a little bit about you like i don't really know who, who are you but then i'm paying for this so it's like uh, well i don't have time to get to know you because because like that money you're charging me i don't have time to be messing about we need to get right to the nitty gritty but then who goes right to the nitty gritty session one i don't know next just so, kind of solve that issue i was just talking about i don't even know how i like you can we low-key be friends and i know you can't be friends with your clients or patients whatever but I don't know, like, I feel like I'd be much more inclined to share more with you if we, for example, went for brunch. I'll tell you all my problems over brunch. When I'm well fed, I'll tell you just about anything you need to know. Also, maybe if that's not your vibe, retail therapy. Let's go shopping. Retail therapy might even be cheaper than actual therapy. Is that ringing in my ear? Oh my God, it's getting louder. Okay. Or even like if you come over to my place or I can come over to your place and we can just get like under the duvet and we can chat then. Like we're both comfy in bed. I don't know, I'd be more likely to tell things to you. Now, I know this that's really unprofessional and like inappropriate and you shouldn't be doing that with your clients, but I feel like this is just something that would help me share more, but that's not allowed. So like, do you see Do you see where the, do you see where I'm not gonna share? Do you see where I think therapy's not for me? Maybe if I just get like really like um, independent, you know, non-traditional therapists who conform to my rules, then maybe the problem will be solved. Also, can you share? And I'm gonna say this sentence, and I know it's such an unhealthy, toxic way to look at therapy, but like, if you've got a little bit of me, I'm making myself vulnerable. I feel like it'd be, I feel a lot better if you were making yourself a bit vulnerable and I knew a little bit about you, but then I also, if I realised you had too many issues, I'd probably be like, fuck, how are you going to help me if you've got those many issues? So maybe it's a good idea if we just, you don't tell me anything about yourself, but then how am I going to share with you? Because I'm like, I don't know if I can trust someone who just doesn't ever tell me anything about themselves, you know? Next, I would be really angry if you didn't give me the response I wanted, in the sense that like, have you ever told your friend something, like kind of overshadowing your friend a little bit, and then the minute you've done it, you're kind of like, you don't need to give me the response I wanted, and now I regret oversharing. Imagine having that with a therapist. And then now that's gonna keep me up at night. Why am I having to, having to live with the regret? I'm also you're you're eating into my sleeping time, which is my favorite time. Do you see what the problem is? Next, talking about things just make it real. And I love living in denial. That was pretty simple. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna go too much into it. I love living in denial. I know that therapists like kind of interject and like lead the conversation and stuff like that. But I feel like for the most part, it's a woman conversation, right? 
I'm just talking at you. I don't like that. That doesn't make me comfortable. And I also, I kind of have this plan um, to make therapy more productive and progressive. So I feel like, so here's my issue. I saw this tweet. Oh my god, my voice. I saw this tweet and it was like, somewhere in the world, a therapist is currently telling the worst person in the world that they're like a good person and like, blah, blah, blah everyone else is a problem. Everyone is convinced they're the victim or most people aren't going to share with you things that paint them in a bad light. They're just more likely to tell you like, they're just going to be selective with the information. So I feel like if you brought in the three people who are most closest to this person, your client, uh, your patient, in, like to do like a pre-episode, a pre-episode, a pre-session, a pre-session session, and they told you, about this person through and through not like the problems or anything but just kind of like who they are as a person so like for example she's got a bit of a victim complex she doesn't really like taking accountability just little things so that when you're give, when you're now giving this person advice you kind of know the way they work she can take these character flaws into consideration and i think that it's probably going to be a lot more helpful into making this person a better person i know this doesn't kind of like make a lot of sense but i know it'd be really hard to actually do that and it's ridiculous and also who's paying for this but i don't know i just feel like that for me I just think it's a really good idea and I just like to put it out there just in case someone can make that happen, which I doubt anyone can. Okay, you guys. And just like that, another week passes us by. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This ringing in my ear is literally, the more I talk, it's literally getting louder. It's insane. I can't even believe I've managed to record an episode. I didn't think an episode, a video. I didn't think I'd be able to make it this far, but the fact I have has just been giving me so much hope. But I love you guys. Don't ever say I'm not good to you. Peace, love, respect, everything in between. See you guys next week. Maybe. <laughs>